There is a war going on in cyberspace where we minister. It's vicious. Satan attacks with great guile in heresies, tempting some to great loss in their ministries. The stakes are high. It is the eternal soul God gave man. Either a soul will go with God through belief in Jesus Christ or will stand before his judgment seat, the great white throne of Jesus, who will judge sins, and that judgment will sentence one to eternal separation from God forever in the lake of fire, which is called the second death. The Bible declares and is true that every human being who has ever lived has sinned. To sin is to do something, whether in thought, word, or deed, that contradicts God's perfect and holy character. Because of our sin, we all deserve judgment from God. We need to be saved before we die in our sins. And our ministry to others is to get them the truth before they die in theirs. The key is in our sins. If in our lifetime we come to the place of conviction of our sins by the power of God the Holy Spirit, who is the convictor, by faith given by God, to believe in Jesus Christ for forgiveness and remission of all our sins, we will be saved forever, not by anything we have done, but by what God has done for us through Jesus Christ. The satanic spirit of deception runs deep in some teachings we see on YouTube. These satanic religious spirits talk to some people and deceive them. They in turn bring us heretical messages in videos and in their profile even after they have recited that Jesus is Lord and saved them. Here is a perfect example. One man has released over 1,700 videos on YouTube and influences many and is very busy counseling others and sets down the following truth in his profile, he says. To err is human, to willfully sin is wicked. God will not forgive deliberate sin if you do not seriously repent. What's wrong here, beloved? It sounds reasonable at first. To sin is a terrible thing. To sin after we're saved is terrible, even worse than terrible. But this is total heresy because it denies the Lord and the gospel of the grace of God. Beloved, God forgives every sin of a believer the moment we believe. Our sins will never come before God our Father for judgment. Jesus stands in for us. He is our advocate. He never has nor ever will lose one of us. He is the perfect advocate for the lost sinner who loves him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. This great blessing was not earned by us. We did nothing to deserve it. We received all God has to give us, only through Jesus Christ. After this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scriptures might be fulfilled, saith, I thirst. Now there was set a vessel full of vinegar, 
and they filled the sponge with vinegar and put it upon hyssop and put it to his mouth. When Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. What was finished, beloved? The saving work of Jesus, the keeping work as our high priest, he now attends to daily. I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. Who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. To him give all the prophets witness that through his name whosoever believes in him shall receive remission of sins. Whosoever believes. Everyone can come to his throne of grace and be clothed with the righteousness of Christ. No one will be turned away, my beloveds, all of us were conceived and born in sin. Jesus came to save the sinner. All have sinned, none are righteous. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And he is the propitiation for our sins and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. The power of sin and death of the devil has no might just because of Jesus, not something we did or can do. Beware of those who deny this truth. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. But God commendeth his love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. The death sentence was lifted from our shoulders. We received a lifetime pardon that God has said cannot be revoked. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Beloved, we did nothing to obtain or earn salvation, then how can we lose it? The conditional security of a believer is a heresy that is taught on YouTube, acceptable only to those who also believe that they somehow contributed to their salvation in the first place or must do something afterwards or not do something to remain saved. It gives man a reason to boast. If by my cooperation with the Spirit of God I remain faithful to the end, I can boast about how I was able to stay the course and finish the race. However, there will be no boasting in heaven except to boast in the Lord. The doctrine of conditional salvation of the believer is not biblical. The Bible is quite clear that we persevere in the faith because God preserves us. He keeps us. We don't keep him. That according as it is written, he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. Beloved, in the death of our Lord, he subtracted our sins, but in his resurrection, he gave us a sure, abundant entrance into heaven. We stand in his righteousness. He was delivered for our offenses, but he was raised again for our justification. What do we receive freely from God our Father through Christ, his only begotten Son? Let us take a look at this. For you know that it was not with perishable things such as silver or gold that you were redeemed from the empty way of life handed down to you from your forefathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect. The word redeem refers to a purchase being made, a price being paid. For a Christian to lose salvation, God himself 
would have to revoke his purchase that he paid for with the precious blood of Jesus. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. To justify means to declare righteous. All those who receive Jesus as Savior are declared righteous by God. For a Christian to lose salvation, God would have to go back on his word and undeclare what he had previously declared. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For a Christian to lose salvation, eternal life would have to be taken away. A Christian is promised to live forever. How then can God break this promise by taking away eternal life? And those he predestined, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. Those he justified, he also glorified. According to Romans 8.30, glorification is guaranteed for all those whom God justifies. Glorification refers to a Christian receiving a perfect resurrection body in heaven. If a Christian could lose salvation, God would not guarantee glorification of all those whom he predestines, calls, and justifies, and then takes it back. Is there any sin that God will not forgive? For the lost who die in their sins, this is the only sin God cannot forgive. For the righteous, salvation is in Christ, but our standing in service will be affected by sin. For God will judge sin we commit, and his judgment may be hard if our sins are grievous. Yet our eternal security still rests in Christ, unassailable, unending, through his blood, redeemed forever. The Lord Jesus Christ became our sin sacrifice. Our place in heaven is secure in him. The Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Nothing can separate a Christian from God's love. Nothing can remove a Christian from God's hand. To him who is able to keep you from falling, and to present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy. To the only God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, power, and authority through Jesus Christ, our Lord, before all ages, now and forever. Amen. Beloved, God keeps us. We do not keep God. Our precious Jesus, our Lord and Savior, has placed his seal in us permanently in God the Holy Spirit at the moment we believe. He will never leave us. And though we remain in our body, our sin nature present, our Lord has provided a means for us to keep our fellowship with God, our Father, by confession of sin. His blood bought ones and cleans us permanently. As to judgment, we are not under it, but our sins separate us from God our Father and thus we are instructed in 1 John 1, 8 to 10, and 1 John 2, 1 to 2, not to deceive ourselves, but to confess our sins, and we will be cleansed by the blood of our high priest above, Jesus Christ. In this manner, we renew our walk with our Father in full fellowship by the anointing of the Holy Spirit we pray for daily. Beloved, there is no sin he did not die for, and not one of us will ever be lost. The Lord keeps his word. Let us pray for those who are deceived by these demonic religious spirits, that they be delivered into the full light of the truth of God's word, that once saved in Christ, always saved for the Father in eternity.